We are back for another analytic income whatever report you want to call it. And I love doing these every single month and you guys love watching them. So I'm really, really pumped to take a look back at the month of June and see, you know, what grew, what stayed the same, what needs some work, where I spent money, where I made money, all the things. So if you love watching income reports, we're going to hit my income report for June of 2020. What is up y'all? I am Jessica and I am so glad that you're back here on my channel. If this were to be the first time we're meeting each other, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I own a company called Hey Jessica where I teach hashtag all the things to help entrepreneurs start, build, and grow the business of their dreams. And since this is an income report and an analytics report, you need to know that I make money from ads, I make money from affiliates, sponsorships, and from course and digital product sales. Now my business is getting ready to go through some different changes, nothing major, but some things that will hopefully grow my income even more and even more in the ways that I want to grow it. None of my courses are available or have been available since I started doing these income reports. So that's been really interesting because normally in a normal year, course income would have been at the top of the list. But since I started filming these, all my courses have been pulled down and I really haven't made any money from courses except for one mini course that I launched in May. So I've got everything pulled up here behind me on my computer. So let's just dive in and see what June looked like. In the interest of full disclosure, I have my camera propped up on a box because my husband currently has my taller desk tripod um, outside filming with it. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna start where we always start, which is with my YouTube analytics. Now, these analytics have consistently grown throughout the months and um, are probably one of my favorite analytics to look at because it shows like true growth in my channel and my channel literally grows every other piece of my business. So let's look at that. The interesting thing about my YouTube stats in the month of June is you will see that most of them are lower than the month of May. And honestly, that is not a scary thing for me or is not weird or something I'm worried about. I honestly expect that to happen as we go into summer because what happened was people went home, they got quarantined in March and everybody started watching YouTube and doing the things. And then that we've kind of rode that wave and it had to end sometime. It had to kind of level back out at some point. And I think that's what we're starting to see. So I believe personally that in the month of June, you know, people started getting outside more. They're not watching as much YouTube, or at least I hope so. I'm, I mean, I'm a YouTube creator, obviously, but I don't want people sitting around and watching their computers all day. I feel like they're probably better off if they get some vitamin D, but um, you will see that throughout this. So I will compare this to May's numbers that I have written down right here, um, and then I will pop those on the screen as well. So my views were 245,000 views. In the month of May, I actually had 296,000 views. So my views were down about 50,000, which, you know, in the scheme of things sounds like a lot. It's really, it's, it's fun. My watch time hours were 16.2 thousand. So, and last month they were 18.8 thousand. So my watch time hours were down about 2,000. Then subscribers, I was up about 5,000 subscribers in the month of June. And in the month of May, I actually added about 5,600 subscribers. So that subscriber number went down a little bit in June, not much. And then my estimated revenue in June was 34.62.49. And I made about 400 more in May. So I made about 38. 99 in May. So you can see that everything kind of went down a little bit, which honestly, it makes sense that if the views aren't up and the watch time isn't up, the subscribers aren't going to be up as high and the income isn't going to be up as high. But you know, like, like I said, I think that's fine. I think it's normal and I'm not that worried about it. So this is really cool. This is fairly new and this is 
YouTube telling me what affected my channel's performance last month. So you can see here that there were more views from YouTube search results. So I can actually click this button and go see what those search results were, what those search terms were. So um, a lot of people were searching Trello and finding my videos. A lot of people were searching affiliate marketing for beginners, good notes, digital planners, and then affiliate marketing are my top five or six there. So those were the search terms that people were searching the most and finding my videos in the month of June. Now, going forward, it would be smart of me to <laughs> capitalize on that. Um, but the thing is, I love my digital planner, but I don't wanna be a digital planner channel. So I'm, I try not to do a ton of content around that. I And so that knocks out the digital planner search term and GoodNotes 5. I don't use Trello anymore. So, I mean, that would be inauthentic for me to be like, oh, let's do a bunch of Trello videos. And then the other two are affiliate marketing, which I definitely plan to do some more videos about. So you can see there what those search terms were. If we go back into this um, analytic from YouTube, it also says my videos reached more people and convinced them to subscribe, which is really cool. Um, so this says keep up the work. If your channel continues to grow at this rate, it will take about two months to reach 90,000 subscriptions instead of the four months it would take in, it would have taken otherwise. And I love this because if you remember, I did a video a couple months ago and I was like, okay, so if I continue at the rate I am, which at the time was about 2000 subscribers a month, I said, you know, I will hit a hundred thousand by the end of the year. And I was like, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm going to make sure that I hit a hundred thousand way before the end of the year. And I am on track to do that in the next few months. So um, you can actually toggle down on this and see that 228,000 views were from people who weren't subscribed, um, which is a lot. Guys, I only had 245,000 views. So that means that people who are subscribed only contributed to about 20,000 of my views, whereas 228,000 of them were from people who weren't subscribed. So then what happened is that those people weren't subscribed and they saw my videos and they wanted more and now they are subscribers. So I expect to see that stat be a little bit different in July. And then revenue went up because more people saw more ads on your videos. All right, this is a fun one to talk about. I want to do a whole video on this actually, but I a, a strategy that I teach my clients or taught my clients when I had clients um, was to go into your top performing videos and insert more ad breaks because if people are watching them, then they're gonna watch them through the ads and that'll make you more money. So what I have been doing is one, I went back through all of my like top performing videos, probably my top 10, um, and inserted more ad breaks in the middle of the videos and also inserted them strategically so that they weren't in a spot where people would drop off as easily. That definitely helped my income over the last few months. Again, I wanna do a whole video about that. Um, but also I've been making sure I insert mid-roll ads inside of my, every new video that goes live as well. So you'll see ads in this video um, that happen in the middle and that is because I am purposefully doing that. Um, it's one of those things where I'm producing a lot of free content. So for me, it doesn't bother me at all to think like, oh, I have ads on my videos or I have four ads on this video because it's 30 minutes long. And, um, you know, honestly, I think that's kind of just the price we pay for watching free content. And I'm okay with taking part in that because it increases the income that I make from YouTube. So you can see down here that my top videos in this period are pretty well the same as any other month except for this one. So it can be really hard, at least for me, to make a video that is brand new soar to the top of this list because all of these videos are fairly old. This how to start a blog one isn't old. Um, and well, I guess neither is this one, but um, for the most part, those like top videos are usually older, at least months, if not years older than my current content. And so I love to see newer videos popping up into that 
um, ranking because that means that, you know, I have videos that I'm producing now that are doing really well and getting really good results for my channel and helping more people. Because a lot of times when we have old videos doing it, we have people coming to the channel who aren't necessarily interested in what we talk about now because um, our old videos are our old videos and maybe we have changed niches or topics or angles or whatever. So I'm loving seeing some of the newer videos in the top five. Now, one of the things that I've actually been trying to change for my channel is, or improve, I guess would be the word, is the fact that I want more of my subscribers to be watching my videos. Not that I don't want people who are not subscribed to watch them because they will likely turn into subscribers, but I want more of my subscribers watching them on a regular basis. And last month, this was about 20% of people who were subscribed watched my videos. And um, so, you know, 80% of people who weren't subscribed watched them. And this month it went down again. It is what it is. There's not really much I can do about that, except continually make really good content that my subscribers wanna come back for, and also promote my content on my community page and be involved in the comments and keep people um, really interested to come back. But it is what it is. So you can see here, here's the chart of income over the last five months, and you can see that it has gradually went up and up with May being my largest month and me falling back a little bit in June. I'm not worried about that. I don't think it's gonna go backwards too very far um, and it seems like it's kind of holding steady. Um, and this top earning video category here, which I love, um, this video, this affiliate marketing for beginners video has been one of my top earning videos for a very long time. And I will say the thing that I think contributes most to that is the, the keyword being one that Google or YouTube charges a higher cost per click for. Um, and also the people who are running ads on that are generally willing to pay more money for those ads. And therefore I get a bigger percentage. Let's switch gears to the podcast now. So in the month of June, I actually had a really great month within the podcast. I had almost 13,000 downloads, which is I think the most of any month I've ever had of the podcast. And honestly, again, it makes sense, guys. <laughs> so America is getting back to work. America is commuting again. America is spending less time at home and going for walks and hikes because it's beautiful outside. So it makes sense that, you know, while my podcast listenership died down a little in March and my YouTube watch time spiked up in March, that they're now going to start evening back out to what the normal is. So I'm not at all worried about my podcast stats or my YouTube stats. Um, and you know, it's always good, especially as we look for sponsors and things like that for the podcast, for the numbers to be consistently going up. All right, let's talk about my funnels. So this tends to be the thing that so many people want to see every month and I love showing it. And I also love building out funnels and plan to build out even more and plan to have even more things incorporated into this. Um, but last month, if you'll remember, I released a course called a course about ClickUp and it is literally a course about ClickUp, <laughs> but basically it's a mini course It's 27 bucks and it is um, a course specifically for content creators and entrepreneurs to figure out how to use ClickUp, which is a project management system to manage their world. I also have an upsell on this course for $15 for, for templates within the program. So there are about 10 or 15 templates that you get as a bonus if you buy that bonus. And essentially they help you not have to like come up with your own systems. It's things like ad tracking, YouTube tracking, um, content planning, customer service, things like that. So overall with everything that's included in the funnel, each transaction is worth one of two amounts. One is $27 if they just buy the course, and then the other is $41.99 if they purchase the course and the upgrade. So you'll see here on this chart, something I want you to notice is the first of the month I had a spike in sales. 
and I sold a little less than 10 of the bundles. And essentially what that came from was that I announced it or I reminded people on my email list that it was available because I had just, if you watched last month's income report, I had just launched this course like the last day of the month or two days before the last day of May. So um, I reminded them in an email on June 1st that it was available. And so we did have a little bit of a spike in sales and then it kind of did this number, we sold one or two, you know, every other day, and then it completely flatlined. Now, the reason it completely flatlined is I didn't start running ads for it. And everybody who was going to purchase on my email list has purchased and it is what it is. So now it has started flatlining and I was like, no, I don't want this to happen. So what I did was I started running Pinterest ads. Now, um, Pinterest ads are highly performative for my digital planning starter pack. Um, so I was like, I'm gonna start there instead of Facebook ads. And those ads completely flopped. Honestly, they did not do well at all. So I saw a little bit of a spike on like the first full day of them running where I sold, I think, I, I don't know if it'll tell me. Yeah, I sold two of the packages. Um, but then it went back down and honestly, I didn't see a lot of traction from those Pinterest ads at all. Um, I might've even started them right around here and just kind of saw that one spike and that was it. So I decided, you know what? Pinterest must not, not be the avenue for this specific funnel. So I'm going to start running Facebook ads, which is what I did right here. I started running Facebook ads on June 26th. So again, at the very end of the month. Um, and that's where you're seeing this spike. Now, obviously there's a dip and then a spike back up and it has continued into July. I'm recording this on the 3rd of July and it has continued to, con to like spike back up. So if we switch over to my Facebook ad analytics, I spent, I have it switched to June 1st to June 30th and I did not again start these ads until June 26th, but I spent $172 and Again, these started right around here. And if if we filter out like how much money I made from that 172, I made about $488 in revenue and that is working great for me. Um, as we continue into the month of July, my um, profit margin has gotten even better. I'm spending less on ads and making more money. Um, but as a whole in the month of June with what came from my email list sales, what little, you know, like two sales from Pinterest ads, and then starting Facebook ads at the end of the month, that funnel made about $1,340. Now, again, that's from a 27 or $41 transaction. Now we're gonna switch over here to the digital planning starter pack, and I still only have Pinterest ads running for this. And funny story, I actually tried to up my budget for Pinterest ads and Pinterest basically won't spend the money I told them to spend. Um, you know, with ads, you're always kind of at the mercy of whomever like you're running ads with, whether it's Pinterest or YouTube or, or Facebook or whatever. And I mean, you could tell them that you wanna spend $100 a day and they could be like, eh, we don't really. We don't really want to do that. And I think, I don't know enough about Pinterest ads to know if I needed to like stop them. So with Facebook ads, and this is just a little um, asterisk and a little lesson, but with Facebook ads, if you increase the budget by more than about 25% in a 48 hour period, I think it's 48 hours, I'm rusty on Facebook ads, but um, then it kind of confuses the system. So you really should only increase by about 25, I think, percent um, every 48 hours or so until you get to the budget you want. So if you see an ad is doing well, you want to do it slowly. And Pinterest is probably the same way, which is probably why I had this happen. So initially I was spending about $10 a day and I tried to up it to about $100 a day. It still has not <laughs> spent anywhere close to $100 a day. We're still sitting somewhere between like $15 and $20 a day, if that. Um, and most days it's still $10 a day. Again, I'm not super great with Pinterest ads, and so I'm not sure why that's happening. But essentially, that is the only place I'm advertising these digital planner starter packs. Now, 
Let's also say that I do have a pop-up on my website. So if someone, so remember, back in my channel anal analytics that my digital planning video and my Good Notes 5 video are in my top five for views in the month of June. In those videos, I mentioned my planner. I mentioned the URL to the shop on my website and I send them there. They can purchase any of the planners on the page or there is a pop-up that tells them about this particular funnel. Then they can go purchase this, okay? so. This isn't necessarily all from Pinterest traffic. This is partially organic traffic as well, but this is not traffic that I am like working very hard to send. It is all coming from passive past videos, sending traffic to my website or Pinterest. So on Pinterest in the month of June, I spent $347.15 on the digital planner ads, okay? $347.15 and I made $3,843. So roughly that is a profit of about $2,400, $2,500. Now, again, I have tried to increase the budget here <laughs> um, and make more sales because I'm okay with spending more money to make more money. Um, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. That's definitely on the list in the month of July um, to figure out like what I can do to increase the budget if I need to start new ads or whatever. But those are really the only two things that I have sold this month um, as far as you know courses and things like that. I have some residual payments still coming in from some courses I sold and I still have sponsorship and affiliate money coming in as well. And I'm really excited because I am going to be relaunching, hopefully relaunching um, a couple of my courses in the month of July, or at least getting them up there where they can be sold um, on the website, whether I'm actually doing a big launch for them or not. So I'm really excited about that, as well as some new things that are coming to my website and to my business, which you'll just have to wait and see on that. I was hoping it would be happening this month and it probably still will, but um, it may be later towards the month of, later towards the end of the month of July. But a really exciting thing that is happening this month and that is up until now, you know, for, I, I mean, I've been in business almost 10 years in its totality. And I, I was completely a solopreneur for the first four, five years of that, for the first five years of that. About in my fifth year, I hired my first VA for very, very little hours per month to just kind of help me with some admin stuff, that kind of thing. And then from there, I have hired, I've had different contractors, I've had, you know, video editors and podcast editors and graphics people and like whatever, right? I've had different contractors along the way with OBMs and VAs and customer service VAs. And this month, in the month of July, I'm hiring my first full-time employee. And it's really exciting. So one of the things um, that I don't talk about a lot, well, I mean, I talk about this first part a lot, but I don't talk about the second part a lot. One of the things for me that's really important is that I live in a very, very, very small town. And I have known from the very beginning of this journey that when I hire a full-time employee, that while I absolutely could hire a remote employee, I don't want to. I want someone local, and um, that is because of a multiple different reasons, but more so than anything, it is so that I can contribute to the job market in my area because we don't have a lot of jobs and we specifically don't have a lot of well-paying jobs. So. I am hiring my first full-time employee. I'm very excited about it. I am starting interviews next week. We've had applications coming in. Um, so by the time you watch this, I'll like may have decided who I'm hiring by now and or it may be next week, but I'm really excited about that. And I am bringing that person on to really handle the where I'm going with my business. So that's why I say when I was hoping to have 
these new things that were going to be happening for my website and my brand done in July. Um, I am just now waiting to bring someone on and using the rest of the summer to train them. So it could be happening later in the fall, but I'm really excited about that. Hopefully that is helpful and motivational and all the things and something that helps you see where income comes from and where people are in business and in life and all the things. So if there's anything you, that you want to see a specific video about that I touched on in this um, analytic and income report, let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to put those on the calendar to do soon. But until next time, make sure you hit subscribe if you're new here. And if you're not new here, make sure you come back every Tuesday and Friday for new videos from moi. Bye y'all.